here we have official U.S. PlayStation Magazine issue, I believe, number 69. No, um, no jokes will be appreciated about that. Oh, I got these. You know, this is something that they started doing eventually, which was loading up, like, these videos automatically when you went into it. And in some cases, they were just videos that you could select from the menu. And in other cases, they were just, like, special things that they put in there because they wanted to sell you something. <laughs> I'm not sure what the economics of the demo discs were for this magazine. Because on one hand, like, it's gathering together, like, the distribution of the disc itself isn't going to be that expensive. But gathering together everything, like, um, having the disc manufactured, having it uh, organized and the data put on the disc and all that kind of stuff, along with all this extra stuff, must have been something that cost... What, what was the company? It wasn't Ziff Davis that published this magazine. Somebody published this. It must have cost something. So I wonder what, how they got the demos. Were the demos like paid advertisements? Or did the magazine have to pay for the demos? Or was it like, hey, you get a demo loaded in here for free, you just have to provide it for us, that kind of thing. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, let's get into this. World Tour of Soccer 2003. As is typical, I am likely going to split this up into two separate episodes because these demo disc theater things tend to go on for a long time. Two hours. Can't be one video being two hours long. So it'll be the playground and then the extra features in another episode. London Studio. That is a studio which... Oh, God. Um, what did London merge with? Let me look it up on my phone. I have the internet in my pocket, and I'm not even using it. Okay, exhibition match. Was a British, you know, I looked this up earlier. I looked this up in the last episode. They did like SingStar and iToy games and um, these football games, soccer. Um, a lot of SingStar. A lot of SingStar. They did Blood and Truth and VR Worlds. Ah, oh, well, those were VR. Blood and Truth was actually a, a fairly big thing. Erica. What the hell is Erica? Fuck it. Who cares? They used to do sports stuff. Then they got into eye toy stuff. There was no eye toy. Well, there was an eye toy for the PlayStation 3, wasn't there? Uh, the PlayStation Eye, I think it was called. Didn't see much use at all. Although it did have some... Did have some... Um, interesting games. Is this game Frozen? Shit. Come on. <laughs> okay, it's not frozen. Not bad graphics for a... Uh, not bad graphics for a PS2 game. A mid-gen PlayStation 2 game. Ah, fuck. <laughs> okay, you know what? I take it back. You look at these guys up close. And there's some corrupted textures in the crowd. Fuck, I don't know what I'm... Ah, fuck. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not used to this. Oh, look, someone puked on the field. Haha. <laughs> Dude, get your arm down. You look weird. That was a mistake. Look how little that guy is. <laughs> You're gonna get um, weird little corrupted textures and graphical glitches on this on account of it being 
emulated. So for quite a long time, every old game that I play has been emulated. Back when I first started this, the first couple of LPs that I did started at least playing on original hardware, or at least original-ish hardware. <laughs> like the... I originally started playing the game Xenogears, and that was played on a PlayStation 2 with the video being captured by a capture device. The quality of the video wasn't very good, and I ended up um, eventually switching to a PlayStation emulator, which ended up giving me problems, but, you know, overall, the quality of the video was better, so, you know, why not? But the problem is that these emulators aren't perfect. And if you want to if you want to get the best picture quality possible, you're going to want to sit there and adjust the settings, like load the game up, see how it looks. Load the game up, see how it looks, adjust the adjust all the settings in the emulator to try it. Jeez, the goalie's all out here. <laughs> Adjust the settings to try to get something that looks good, and then you do it basically on a on a game by case by case basis. Ah, fuck you, man. Ah, I kicked in the wrong way. The problem with the demo discs are that they are so many different games that you can't really. The ref the ref tried to uh, intercept. So many different games that you can't really get a good handle on what you're doing. Jump into the game and there are graphical glitches. Well, unfortunately, I have to live with it because I'm not changing everything just for the sake of this one demo. So shit like this is going to happen. All right. Well, ended. I think I ran out of time. 989. 989 or Sony London. They weren't the same company. They weren't the same studio. Screw it. Moving on. It's been a long time since I played a game, for this channel anyway, on original hardware. Actually, no, what the fuck am I talking about? I'm lying about that. Final Fantasy uh, VII uh, Rebirth. <laughs> That's on original hardware. Just it happens to be uh, contemporary hardware. <laughs> I'm mildly drunk. I'm mildly drunk. Uh, so... Hopefully you can forgive some of this. <laughs> I don't get drunk that often while doing this. Sometimes I've done a few of these drunk. Renderware! That's a blast from the past. Renderware. That was an old game engine. Gone obsolete years ago. Was I playing a baseball game? Okay. <laughs> oh, shit, I don't even know what team I selected. I wasn't looking. You can tell I'm drunk, right? Hello, I got this bottle of Jim Bean vanilla. Usually I'm not a fan of these flavored liquors, but straight bourbon whiskey. But every once in a while, I actually I got this a while, uh, sometime back on a vacation because I wanted to mix it with, um, what the hell did I want to mix it with? Some Like a cherry cola. I figure the cherry vanilla, am I pitching? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pitching. Yes, awesome. Ball. I didn't choose ball. Okay, so there we go. I like... I like... And... <laughs> I was gonna say, if you didn't catch that, you're fired. <laughs> Alright, I am not gonna be praising the graphics too much on this. I get the that we're dealing with a PlayStation 2 game, so... Like a mid-gen PlayStation 2 game, so I really shouldn't be 
that hard on it, and it's possible that... What the fuck are you doing? That motherfucker jumped in the air. All right, to the pitcher. Okay, the pitcher. Hey, here you go, buddy. <laughs> I'm playing this game on a much higher resolution than it should have been. Um... It's fired home. I'm playing this in a much higher resolution than the original game would have been. So you're seeing details that you wouldn't have in the original. And I'm also got to keep in mind that a lot of these characters, there's a lot of characters on the field, of course, because they're playing baseball. And I don't know. Ball. It's a ground ball. Fuck, I'm pressing the X button as soon as he hits the ball, which causes the guy in the field to just jump, <laughs> which c keeps him from moving, uh, reacting. Wow, did I do that? What the hell? He just glitched out. Motherfucker. He fouls it off. One ball, two strikes. They're leading so far. Like, he sprints into his lead. It's, look at that. The guy on the second base. It's a fly ball. It lands in there for a base hit. Salmon is coming home. It bounces over the okay. wall for a ground rule double. Ground rule double. One run for Anaheim. The pitcher is really struggling out there. The Cardboard cut out, people. <laughs> All right, I'm about to um, back out of this game. I would like to have gotten up to bat, but that's a bit of a lie. I don't really care. I'm going to get a save state at the menu here so I can hop out faster. Smash cars. What is this? I mean, a racing game. Probably like... Combat Racer? I don't remember this. Oh, this is a video. Oh, no. There were controls, so it wouldn't be a video. Crete Studio? Weirdo, there's so... The, I mean, the gaming industry is so big. And it's been around for so many decades now. That there's these so many games out there that people don't even remember. You would have to figure that if they're going to go put for the effort of putting down a demo. And having the magazine go and produce it. Uh, distribute it. That the game was going to be good enough that it would people would be convinced to buy it based on the demo. So it must have been something of a measure of quality. And this, honestly, this isn't too bad. Game looks all right. Kind of an interesting premise of racing remote control cars like this. <sighs> okay. How do I back up? Square. All right. Chickens, gardeners. I'm not sure I'm going the right way. Sort of doubled back across the course. That may not have been what I'm supposed to do. Okay, it was definitely not what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> and I fucked this up pretty bad. <laughs> oh, there's an arrow. Telling me which way to go. Hey, kid. Yeah, this doesn't look too bad. A little bit of an art, uh, cartoony art style, but... I didn't know these things could drive underwater. <laughs> I wonder how long a game like this would have taken to develop back then. Because you're... Oh, so it's not really a track. You're just moving to these checkpoints. 
and then uh, you move to a checkpoint, and then you move to another one and to another one. So it's not really like there's a track. But I guess it does create some problems, like I'm fucking this up pretty bad because I'm, I don't know which way to go. What was I saying? Oh, something about how long it would take to develop a game like this. Back in the PlayStation 1 and the PlayStation 2 era, a single studio would produce like four, five, six games in a single generation because the development time for these things wasn't so long that... Shit, I'm on the wrong side of this. Wasn't so long that you would spend a, maybe like a year or so developing a game and then... You'd spend perhaps a year or so developing a game, and then you'd be able to, to break off and and uh, release it and start a new one. So I figured these games would take like a year or so to develop. <laughs> uh, you would um, so you would nowadays even like smaller titles have so much. So much development time. Okay, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> it would take a long time to develop anything anymore. Are these all demos? Okay, so I'm going to jump into it. But this is a demo I played before. And it's supposed to be voting. What's your favorite fighting game? So I'm going to jump into this, but I'm not going to play it for more than a few seconds just to sort of rehash what it is, because I played a demo of this uh, not too long ago on another episode of Demo Disc Theater. So you just want to bring it up. It's like um arena combat with giant monsters kind of thing. You had King Kong and you had the eye thing. Anyway, nowadays, game development takes so long that a studio in an entire console generation will have one or two games or so. And in extreme cases like fucking Dragon Age, we're now ten fucking years since the last Dragon Age game. The scale is just way out of whack. Alright, we've seen this. Rocky. I do remember this Rocky game. I didn't, I didn't buy it, but I do remember this Rocky game coming out. And I remember thinking it was a little bit of a weird license for a game of this era. Because the last Rocky movie had probably come out... When did the when did Rocky V come out? Like 1991 or something like that? It's just like 10 years later. Why would they make another Rocky movie? A Rocky game? Well, they did make another couple of Rocky movies. Ah, Rocky and Apollo! Jeez, Apollo looks so weird there. He died recently. Oh my god, what's his name? Oh, the actor's name, I... Button? Carl Weathers, that's it. He died not too long ago. Just watched Predator recently. Carl Weathers was in it. We're still loading. And we're not loading anymore. What's happening? Okay. Oh my god, Rocky. <laughs> I do like how they have. 3D animated crowd, but there, uh, except for like the second balcony. But the oh my god, there's so many duplicated people. I mean, like there's only so much memory. You got to do what you got to do. It looks goofy as shit. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god, it's Bruce Campbell. Welcome to the Philadelphia Arena. This is your main heavyweight championship event of the evening. In the red corner. 
I guess they couldn't get Michael Buffer because the Ready to Rumble games. Apollo Creed. And then the blue corner in white trunks with red. All right, all right, we get it. Okay, so the boxing's a little bit less goofy than the last boxing game that I played. Uh, what was Fight Night? Was the there aren't any fight night games anymore but those were like the pinnacle of boxing i think of course unless you're counting mike tyson's punch out how do i bomb me oh i gotta i gotta rapidly tap x to get him up fight on is that all you got how do i bomb head movement how do i do head movement All right, Apollo, you're about to fuck him up. I don't know how to block. I don't know how to do anything. One, two, three. All right, Rocky, quit four, being a bitch and get up. Fight on. Oh, I survived the round at least. Great round. Keep the pressure on. He's yours for the taking. Landed forty four to eleven. It was a Rocky VR boxing game, I think. For the PlayStation VR. It might have been like an Oculus version too. Did we glitch? I think we glitched. Or are we just running out the time between rounds? Anyway, screw it. Jumping out of this one. Pride FC Fighting Championships. Pride was a mixed martial arts um, promotion based out of Japan. It ran up until a little over 10 years ago when it, um, it was being slammed pretty hard by the government and then it was bought out by the ultimate fighting championship and dissolved it's more than 10 years ago it's a while back now i don't think i've ever played this game i mean i must have played this game i have the demo disc Let's get through these menus Fight a single match. What am I against the comp player? Oh, it's two player in this demo. We're not getting some things loading up. I wonder how many of these um Like I can't choose. Oh, Igor Volchanchin. Alright. Ah, oh, shit. Um, can he fight himself? Oh, yes, he can, apparently. It's just... My money's on Igor winning. Okay, no air water king. No head batting. No attack going. Free fight. Free fight. Shake up. Okay. All right. Don't know. Uh, I don't, don't know how to play. Okay, I'm the one in black. Ah, jeez. Honestly, the only good MMA games I ever played were the. I mean, the EA ones that they have now are all right, but the THQ, the ones from THQ were especially towards the end they were good damn
Let's just step it. KO? What? Oh, shit. I lost. I was right. Igor did win. X-Men Next Dimension. Did I play this demo? <laughs> a lot of these little... I'm assuming that every one of these is one that's already been on a previous demo disc. Paradox. It's not the paradox I'm thinking of, is it? Activision. Skip over. Uh, Beast vs. Enix. All right, loading. Loading. And still loading. And there we go. Frame rate's a little bad. Ah! I think I played a, an X-Men game, but it was like a PlayStation 1 game. So this isn't what I played before. No ring outs, I guess. I definitely would have had one there. Alright, so this is not my favorite fighting game. <laughs> There were a lot of, I mean, the 3D fighting game craze is sort of dead. You still have games that are like basically 3D rendered, like the Street Fighter games as of late, the last few of them. Oh, there is a ring out. Look at that shit. Or, okay. <laughs> you have like the Street Fighter games or... Um, and the Mortal Kombat games, which are 3D rendered, but they're not, like, played in a 3D space, if you know what I mean. Because the 3D fighting craze is sort of over. The Tekkens, the Soul Calibers, the Virtua Fighters, all of those that, like, were basically pure, like, true 3D fighters, meaning they played in a 3D space. They've sort of gone away. I guess because adding that um, third dimension where they can go back uh, deeper into the environment or closer to the camera or whatever that sort of it adds some weird complexities to it makes it just a little bit more awkward whereas if the characters are locked on a single plane then you got much tighter controls so you started to see the 3D fighters like you had it originally with Virtual Fighter and then it really took off with Tekken and then Soul Calibur beyond it. But um, it's kind of out of fashion now. Had a good run. Good 15 years, something like that. All right, so this Black and Bruised, I played this already. I believe in the last episode I played this and I got my ass kicked. But I'll go into it for a few seconds just to see what it, show you what it looks like. I think I played the girl last time. Mickey McFist. I look at the, the, the environment, it's just a flat. <laughs> so cheap looking. I mean, that's part of the charm that they're trying to... Actually, like, the character models look really good. Honestly, the character models are something that I would expect out of the next generation, like the PlayStation 3, 360 generation. I mean, of course, like I said, I'm, I'm running this on an emulator and the resolution of the game itself is higher than it should have been. Oh, I'm using the control pad to move. So it's running at a higher resolution than it should have, but the, the detail and all that and the character models looks way good for a PlayStation 2 game. 
particularly in this Mickey McFist. Alright, we've seen this. Alright, so that's the playground. Only a half an hour in. Wow. I'm still gonna end up splitting this up, though. So, thanks for watching. Come back. We'll watch the other half of this demo disc.